now. You have arrived in northern Middle Franconia, about 30 kilometers south of Würzburg. This is a classic traditional farming region, mainly associated with pig fattening or pig processing. We also farm cattle, but not many, because we don't have much grassland here. It is a classic arable farming location. Uh huh. So, what do you do on your farm now? We farm about 250 hectares of arable land and a little extensive grassland. It starts here at the front with the grain silos, then comes the pig fattening and the pig fattening barn. We have about 850 spaces there, which we recently converted to animal welfare. That's why we have reduced the numbers a little for the benefit of the animals. We also added a biogas system in 2001. Ah, okay. And what are your main crops? About half of the area is grain, mainly winter wheat, of which we feed about 30% to the pigs and market the remaining 70% as grain for bread. And winter barley for the pigs. And the other half is sugar beet and silage maize for the biogas plant. The sugar beet goes to the sugar factory in Oxenfort for regional sugar. You're quite digitally savvy. What does that mean for your farm? It started with the first land use register about 20 years ago. At the time, it was mainly used for documenting crop protection records and fertilizer records. Mm -hmm. What is also required is a bit of an economic comparison between the individual fields, that is, between the measures. However, it has now gone more in the direction of site-specific management. That is, I would like to make specific savings on farm materials, fertilizers and crop protection products. And what does it look like in practice? What do you need for that? It usually starts with harvest maps, either from harvesting machines, combined harvesters, maize choppers, or with notional harvest maps. These are then known as biomass potential maps. Where do these biomass potential maps come from? You can buy them from service providers. I have an example here on which you can see the different colors. These um, are different zone maps of the fields. For example, here is a field with different yield zones. The green zone is where the yield potential is highest, and the red zones are where the yield potential is lowest. This means that I assume that over the long-term average, on the basis of which the images were created, using satellite data, the annual yield is highest in the green areas. Okay. Conversely, for me, this means that the potential is lowest in the red areas. Instead of applying fertilizer at a flat rate as I did in the past, I now specifically fertilize the area of the field with the highest potential, the most, and the zone with the lowest potential, the least. How does it get onto the tractor? You set it up on this PC, right? Exactly. A certain amount of preparation is required. I create the maps on the PC, on the laptop, and they are then transferred to the vehicles wirelessly. The transfer is relatively simple, and I'd say that the preparatory work for the map display takes about two minutes per field. Without a USB stick and long transmission distances. That is an important point. If changes are needed because of errors on the map, which does happen, you can react very quickly and create a new map and then transmit back to the tractor wirelessly, and then you get going or continue. So the maps are one thing, but how does FENT-1 help you to process these maps? FENT-1 helps me and that we often work with two application maps at the same time on one field. In other words, one application map processes fertilizer, and the other processes another product. And that's where FENT-1 is beneficial, because of its multi-boom capability. I can send both assignment maps with one order, and do not need a second transmission route, that is, a second terminal. It can all be done in one go. Carsten, you were just in the field now. What is this nice attachment? Yes, this is an in-sensor, a so-called nitrogen sensor. It has four sensors distributed over the boom and scans the crop in the field virtually online. It transmits this so-called NDVI value. This is a biomass indicator to the software from the tractor, and the tractor tells the spreader where to spread more or less in the field. In other words, specifically adapted to the plants, right? Right. It's divided into two halves, left and right, and then tells the spreader, at this point, for example, the plant density is too thin, please fertilize more here. 
or here it is already thick enough, please fertilize less, and the spreader can then divide it into the left and right working widths. And that already makes it very specific. If we have a working width of 30 meters, the spreader operates 15 meters to the left and 15 meters to the right and can change the values individually. Okay, and is it a rule that you have to do it that way? Or do you do it because you like it? There's no rule, although almost everything has been regulated in agriculture. No, of course, I do it with the aim of saving farming supplies, in this case fertilizer, to feed the plants as much as possible according to their needs, but also to save on fertilizer. And can you say approximately how much you save there? We've been using the end sensor for three years now. We've now reduced our fertilizer input by about 10 to 15 percent, without any noticeable loss of yield. So you now use the end seeker mainly for sowing. Is there any other application area where you use it? Exactly. We use it for fertilization. It's actually always attached whenever we're fertilizing because it's very easy to use. I can hitch it up and drive off straight away. I don't need pre-planning. I can tell the software on the tractor so and so much NDVI biomass means so and so many kilograms of fertilizer, which means that I don't need maps. I can create application maps in the office. I can hitch up the machine and start immediately. This is very interesting, especially when it comes to fertilizer application. When the weather conditions are such that, for example, rain is expected, then as a farmer you just want to drive off. Another application is in crop protection, especially in the use of growth regulators. It's also worked very well there. This means that we have the end seeker at the front that determines the biomass and the crop protection sprayer at the back, and the end sensor that tells the sprayer, here's a lot of crop, more growth regulator here please, here is not so much crop, less growth regulator here please. And in this way we also try to save on crop protection products. We also use it for fungicides. However, here they are only talking about savings potential of somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. And the communication between the end seeker and the fertilizer spreader, how does that work? This runs via the tractor terminal. So we have two ESOBUS devices here. The end seeker is an ESOBUS subscriber and the fertilizer spreader is an ESOBUS subscriber. This means that we now need a tractor that can handle two ESOBUS devices at the same time. Okay, and the 720 can do that, can't it? Fent 1 can do that, and previously we used the system with the Gen 4 Fent. It was relatively demanding because we needed an additional terminal, because you have to operate two devices, so to speak. Two ESOBUS units, two section control, two variable rate control, and it was very difficult. Now with the Fent 1 system on the 720 it's much easier because it can do it on board, and it's equipped to operate both devices at the same time. You also drive it as a contractor. Does Fent1 also help you there, or can you only use it on your land? No, the Fent1 system is a great help, especially in the wage sector. We do a lot of partial area-specific maize sowing with partial area-specific fertilization, which means that we again have two ESOBUS participants on one tractor in order, on the one hand, to control the sowing intensity of the maize seeder using an application map and fertilize using a fertilizer map at the same time, and this is where the Fent 1 really comes into its own, because it can operate both devices with section control, variable rate control, and application maps. And at the same time, there's another help. In the wage sector, there are often many fields to deal with, since I'm only there every two or three years. However, I can plan all of the assignments neatly on the PC beforehand. I can record the fields and the employees or myself. Then I know exactly the layout of the field. Maybe we even still have the guided steering track, which is really a great help. And what about the bookkeeping? Does it help you there too? Exactly. The data is then read back, off-board, so to speak, into the PC. And then I can usually produce a proper invoice a few weeks later when I have time, according to working hours, diesel costs, area covered, and everything else that goes into it. You also said that employees drive for you. What did they think about the introduction of Fent 1? The changeover was very easy in our case, since we already have a Fent 828 Gen 4. This means that the operating structure has remained relatively similar. Only the menu depth is now more one-dimensional. That means I no longer have three, four, or five sub-menus, but usually move between one or two menus and can move back and forth a lot, similarly to a smartphone. Intuitive operation, that actually made it very easy for the staff, and the feedback was actually positive across the board. At first they're shocked when they sit in it and see three terminals, three screens, a lot of buttons, many more buttons than before, but after a relatively short time the feedback was actually, wow, this is really easy to use.